Ah, tanks. For over a hundred years they have faced fire and brimstone in battlefields across the world, from Flerkor Selet to the fields of Prokhorovka, all the way to 73 Easting and on to today. The tank has been the undeniable king of the battlefield. And as some of you may know, I like tanks. I like tanks a lot, in fact. An interest that, among other things, has led me on to today's topic, Girls und Panzer, the rather terrible anime that, while bad, is the perfect one for any tank-loving weeb. But why tanks, of all things? Well, I have always been interested in militaria, and a career in the army was my dream ever since childhood, to follow in my father's footsteps, so to speak, which I did for a short and inglorious period of time that ended in my back going pop. Yay. But for real, it was nothing serious in the long run, but what it does mean, however, is that I am now at a significantly greater risk of a permanent spinal injury, and thus this cheese was once again a civilian. A sad chapter in my life, sure, but my love for things that move on tracks and make other things go boom all the way over there was not diminished in the slightest, and if anything, it has since grown exponentially. And that, ladies and gentlemen, who am I kidding? Gentlemen is the story, or at least a part of it, of how we ended here. Talking about one terrible anime that you should absolutely watch. But before that, a world from the channel partner. I have once again partnered up with Vitto and Kevat. They are a Finnish jewelry and household item brand specializing in high quality, handcrafted and quilted free items with the humorous theme of genitalia. Products ranging from gold and silver necklaces and earrings to cookie cutters, mugs and bedsheets. Head over there now and get 10% off your entire purchase purchase at bitcoinkevat.fi by using the link in the description and pinned comment, or by using the code ADDICHEESE at checkout. And now, finally, Girls und Panzer. The anime that is both perfect and frankly terrible at the same time. It is an anime about tanks and girls who drive those tanks. The part that is perfect, well, mostly perfect, is the tanks, the bad part being the anime. No, no for real. If you look at it as just the anime, it is terrible. The story, the characters, and even the animation, really. At least the sound design is pretty good, but then again, that is more about the tanks than anything else. But as bad as the anime itself may be, as an anime about tanks, it is great. Long story short, the show takes place in a world not too dissimilar to ours. You know, they have bakeries, schools, and cutesy anime girls going to said schools. Okay, we don't have real-life anime girls, but you get the picture. Only, these schools are located on city carriers, cause reasons. And may I say, I would absolutely live on one of those things. Wouldn't think twice. But seriously, cool and needlessly complex housing and schooling arrangements aside, this world has a sport. And I now realize that there is absolutely zero point in trying to create any excitement for the great reveal about that sport, given how much I have already talked about the tanks, and because I'd hazard a guess that there is absolutely nobody watching who has never heard of Girls und Panzer. Yeah, they drive tanks as a sport. It's anime girls driving and fighting in tanks. But not the kind of fighting where whoever is inside those tanks when hit gets turned into minced meat, since that wouldn't be very family-friendly now, would it? Instead of brutal bloody combat Senshador, or Panzerfahren as it's also called, I will be using the Japanese name since I can sort of pronounce it correctly. Sorry Germany, your language is cool and all, but I just can't. So, Senshador. It is a sport promoting the female virtues of valor, good manners, grace and dignity. On the other hand, in real life, tankers are quite frankly the weirdest and most nerdiest bunch I have ever met, so, you know. They do say that art imitates reality, but maybe sometimes it is better to hide that reality in fiction. And at this point, I feel it's prudent to mention that I did originally plan to go full on nitty gritty tank nerdy up in this, but it turned out to take far too much time, and honestly, I have no idea how tank tubers do it, so instead we end up somewhere in the middle of a standard review from me and, well, The rather unimportant story of the anime is that the Orai High School is facing termination, since who knew that maintaining and operating carriers the size of small towns was prohibitively expensive? That is, unless the school makes a name for itself and thus becomes too important to be shut down. Since government officials really care about such things, mm-hmm, yep. 
Clearly. To achieve such fame and fortune, the student council decides to restart Senshado and coax the recently transferred Miho Nishizumi into joining it as she is from the prolific Nishizumi family, well known for their world-class performance in the sport of tank warfare. Too bad she has PTSD, having almost witnessed her teammates drown as their Panzer III became a not-so-well-floating coffin after falling into a river. But of course, this is Japan, so screw your mental problems and it's just... As Orai scrapes together what few tanks and crews they can muster in order to enlist in the Nationals Tournament of Mortal Kombat with tanks to claim their place in the history books for the sake of their beloved school. It's not quite the male dream of selling your life dearly at the face of insurmountable odds while standing for something greater than yourself, but it is pretty close as far as anime goes. The show now consists of 12 episodes and 4 movies going over the battles of the tournament and beyond. And while you can get the whole story by just watching the anime itself, Itself, we all know that that would be heresy of the highest order, and so, naturally, I will only talk about the anime in this video. If you would want to see me cover the movies in future videos, do let me know in the comments below. And now, finally, to the tanks, as well as a few words on the sport of Sen Shadow as a whole. The sport itself just boils down to World War II, and very rarely World War I tanks fighting each other in a world where clearly armor penetration matters, but the sport itself is still safe, since those pesky armor-piercing rounds don't actually pierce the armor of tanks, since apparently they're coated with carbon on the inside. Essentially, this makes no sense. Funnily enough, tanks are designed to kill other tanks, along with infantry. End of story. But we shall forgive them for this oversight, since while war stories with death and destruction can be interesting, it requires a slightly different setup than a happy-go-lucky school life. Even so, the anime does just hand wave away the dangers of armored warfare almost entirely. Even vehicle fires don't really warrant panic, and Miho, along with the other commanders, is more than comfortable sticking out of her commander's hatch while their Panzer IV is under fire. And yeah, a two-pounder AP, no matter how gimped, might not kill her tank, but if it hits her... And then there is the whole issue of the tanks going far too fast, which you may have noted from the counter slowly increasing as the video progresses. These are, by the most part, World War II tanks, although it's not clear if these are reproductions or the genuine article, but even so, they should be far slower and should have far more mass behind them. Sorry, but a Panzer IV does not drift, no matter how cool it may be. They do have some modern tanks here as well, since the instructor does roll around in a Type 10, but as far as I know, it's never explained if the sport is also played with modern armor. And finally, there is one more glaring issue with the tank side of things, but we will get to that in a bit. As a whole, the feel is there, and any true tank lover will be ready to forgive them for the sake of the whole still feeling very refined and well executed. It's just the right amount of anime over the topness in the scenes presented, and that is mainly because of the tanks themselves, since they are very well done, even if they are CGI and not traditionally animated. I was debating talking about all the tanks in the show, but but for brevity's sake, I will stick to the ones operated by the Orai school, since they are the main character tanks anyway. Just know that they are all very well done and very, very accurate, down to the interiors. Of course, there are some minor flaws, but as a whole, pretty damn good. So, while other schools are more, if not national, spread of tanks, then at least they type. Looking at you, American school with a Sherman Firefly. The Orai school is more mixed, if still leaning towards the, the Germans. It's kind of what they can scrape together and upgrade, since, funnily enough, tanks can be upgraded. It's not quite the World of Tanks way of just slap a new gun on it, but still, it can be done. Admittedly, the vehicle upgrade side being the last real gripe I have with the tanks themselves as it is one of those things that is just sort of hand-waved aside. The Panzer 38T being probably the worst offender, when it gets the simple upgrade kit to be transformed into the Yacht Panzer 38T, also known as the Hetzer. In reality, it isn't exactly a simple slap on a new case made and jobs are good. It was more take parts from two different Panzer 38 variants, widen the chassis a bit, etc, etc, etc. That complexity being the part that is completely missing. 
it feels like it's just the world of tank upgrade, click and install. And Orai's Panzer IV, their lead tank is also a victim of far too simplified upgrade process. Going from what I think is an E model, sorry I'm not an expert on early Panzer IVs, but at least the E has the stepped front plate that is present in the anime, then again, some sources I could find do state that the E had applique armor on the front, which is not present in the anime. If it's an even earlier model, do let me know in the comments below, I would really like to know. From this, we shift to a sort of an F2 with the long 75 KW K40, but it's not really an F2 either, since we also see the presence of the extra armor plate on the front of the vehicle that should only be present on the late G model of the tank. And not only that, it's the even older form of bolted on applique armor, and the vehicle is still sporting the older form of muzzle brake. And yes, I am fully aware that at this stage I am just nitpicking. The last variant of the Panzer IV we see is also kind of a mess but a better kind since it's a sort of an amalgamation of all of the previous variants. On the surface during the final match, Orai's Panzer IV is the final version of the tank known as the Ausfahrung H, but it's not really, and if anything it feels more like a continuously upgraded Panzer that has been repeatedly brought back for refurbishment in between combat, which I suppose it has. The problem being that in some versions of the anime it is referred to as the H, which it's not. The H model would have a new longer gun, an L48 rather than the F2 and G's L43, as well as a brand new 80mm frontal plate instead of the face hardened applique armor as seen on the earlier G model. But at this point I find it impossible to know if it's intended to represent the H version, or if the tank is supposed to showcase the continued upgrade packages given for early war Panzer IVs, and it doesn't really matter. If anything, I'd argue that the latter option would also be far cooler. The other vehicles or our fields don't really have glaring issues outside of being criminally undercrewed in some cases, but that too reflects the ad hoc nature of the armored force. I already briefly touched on the Panzer 38T, the Czech wonder that managed to serve in the German army all throughout the war, and of course we have the Stug 3, since you do not choose the Stug life, the Stug life chooses you. Although a minor gripe with the naming of it in the show. The Stug, or Sturmgeschütz 3, is referred to as a Panzer 3 with assault gun, which is inaccurate. Yes, it is an assault gun that is built on the Panzer 3 chassis, but the Stug was its own vehicle, and the only reference to the Panzer 3 origins is the 3 in the name, which then serves to separate it from the Stug 4, which, funnily enough, is the same concept done on the Panzer 4 chassis. The one shown in the anime is the Stug 3F, and yes, I know that the one in the footage is a G model, but I had the opportunity to use some footage of a real Stug, and I could not resist, as here in Finland, the Stug is known as the vehicle that served us faithfully during the continuation war, something that Girls in Panzer also makes reference to. Also, sorry for the vertical video, my dad's old and I forgot to tell him that I want it horizontally. <laughs> Editing cheese here, a few more notes on the Stug 3. First, the whole Assault Gun Panzer 3 name might be just a translation error, since I am fairly certain the characters in the anime say Assault Gun 3 Stug, but it's an error I have seen in quite a few versions of the anime, so it's still worth mentioning. And the other thing is slightly more major. And it concerns the anime's mention of the Stug in Finland. In the show, the character Irvin, so named of course because of Field Marshal Irvin Rommel, clearly states the Fuyusensho, meaning Winter War, in reference to the Stug service in Finland, which is just categorically wrong. The Stug did not serve us in the Winter War, but the Continuation War, mainly because the Stug was not in service, even with the Germans, at the time of the Winter War. There is one more tank of German origin serving ORI, but we'll get to that in a bit. First, a quick shot look at the other vehicles that I can't honestly say any word of complaints for, other than the paint scheme during their first match. Look on the mask with my boy. We have the M3 Lee, a predecessor to the venerable M4 Sherman in the US service, and no, it was not a terrible tank, it was in fact a very good tank for its age. Screw you world of tanks for making people think that the Lee was bad. Then there is the Type 89 Igor, a Japanese medium showcasing just how terrible most Japanese tanks of the war were in terms of tank-on-tank -tank engagement. They still performed well in their intended role of infantry support, but this thing facing an M4 is a very one-sided fight. On the contrary, the very briefly shown Type 3 Chinu demonstrates pretty much the only globally competent tank of the period hailing from the land of the rising sun. 
Yes, I know that the Cheeto also existed, but only two having ever been built doesn't really count now, does it? And then we have the French Char B1 Bis, the most powerful tank in the world during the early phases of the war, but one that wasn't utilized that well by the French. Sorry, France, but it's true. You lost to inferior tanks. I know there is also the World War I Mark IV mail pattern tank, but that is movie only, so not for today. And then we get to the final tank that ORI fields, the VK4501P, also known as the Porsche Tiger. The massively armored and armed behemoth that in real life only ever birthed the rather underwhelming Ferdinand and Elephant tank destroyers. In reality, the thing sported a hugely advanced and far too complicated gasoline electric drive that proved to be way more trouble than it was worth. It wasn't the only reason why Porsche's design lost to the one submitted by Henschel, but it was one of them. And quite nicely, these mechanical issues are represented in the anime as well, with the mechanics club who operate the VK having to constantly repair their vehicle as they drive around. Proper video game style fixing a moving tank. Sure, it has two of those electric motors, but I think any claim that the massively heavy vehicle could be driven with only one of those while the other underwent running repairs seems highly suspect. And not only that, I could find no reference that it was possible. So I think it's just one of those anime rule of cool kind of things. Nonetheless, mechanical issues being represented is still a very nice touch, especially since we see it on other tanks as well and not just the Ori ones, like the Tiger II, which has its running gear fail when pushed too hard, which was a real historical problem with the vehicle. Together with these venerable steel beasts, the Ori school faces fearsome fights against the Sanders School of Shermans in a match marked with peculiar amounts of fear directed towards the Sherman Firefly. Sure, it was a scary tank in its own right, well feared by the Germans in World War II, and it had a monster gun, but at this stage the girls don't yet have any of their heavier vehicles, and even the short 75 is more than enough to end their parade, not to mention the long 76 that Sanders also brings to the table. They also embody the Sisu of Finns in being outmatched against Soviet steel in the frozen north, and finally, in the ultimate match, Miho goes against her former comrades and her own sister, as a team stands firm when faced with the full might of superior German engineering and some that is more of a reflection of the dream of a madman than any actually viable or even vaguely necessary tank design. And before anyone goes actually in the comments, I am firmly of the opinion that the Sherman was the best tank of the war, but the German engineering thing being as much of a meme as the whole Nippon Steel 1000 times folded thing, so I couldn't help but to include it. Aside from the tank battles that sometimes border on the ludicrous, looking at the mouse fight here, the anime is also chock full of references, both his historical and movie related, from responding with nuts when faced with an offer of surrender, to the characters watching the Sherman fighting a tiger scene from Kelly's heroes. All in all, it's an anime that might not shine in any of the usual categories you judge a show by, but even so, it manages to do the very thing it sets out to do. Tell a story of tanks that, while not historically accurate, manages to hold the feeling of respect for these vehicles and what they stand for, and the entire concept of armored warfare as a whole, and that is something I for one can really respect. Be that as it may, with the frankly subpar execution comes the dilemma of rating. Since on the show's merits alone, I might struggle to give it a 5, but at the same time, i am spent a large portion of this video explaining how those merits, or the lack thereof, doesn't actually matter if you're a tank lover. So I will settle on a 7, which is both far more than the anime deserves in the perspective of your typical viewer, and far too little for anyone who has an even passing interest in armored vehicles, and thus I have managed to anger both camps equally. And with that, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, do leave a like and a comment, and while you're down there, why not subscribe as well? Any form of interaction is hugely appreciated, given that the YouTube algorithm has been kicking the channel quite hard as of late. If you feel like saying screw you to the algorithm and want to support me more directly in exchange for some nice perks, you can always become a channel member. If not, but you'd still like to see some more, you can always check out the other content on the channel and look for the social links in the description, some behind-the-scenes Instagram and Twitter posts, as well as Twitch live streams. You never know, I may even stream some tanks. Don't forget to check out the channel partners at bitcoinkavata.fi. And with this, I've been Cheese, and I'll see you next time. Ta-ta for now.